Greetings. Welcome to Jacqueline's Textiles. Just an opening shot of my beautiful Christmas lights that I have in my little closet room. Here is a vision board I do with my life coach. So today we're going to go through my library. Not the whole library because some of these things have nothing to do with weaving. That would be my sewing patterns. And these are my ledgers for my job, my work, my Jacqueline's Textiles. Uh, but we're not really going to go over those right now. We are going to go over, not those either, not the complete encyclopedia of crafts, though I do have every, several of these books have information on weaving and I printed all of them out so I don't have to take each and into the individual book. There's like six or seven books that cover weaving. Well, I have those over here. So ignore the Tudor Taylor. Um, that has something to do with weaving, but it's a book I love. And this is kind of where I keep my like, you know, my favorite little books that I like to go to and uh, read and look at. Reading is very hard because of the PTSD. Um, I am almost completely unable to read at this point, but uh, I struggle through it and just use techniques to just get through it. Um, so ignore the Tudor Taylor because that doesn't have anything to do with weaving. This is a weaving channel. Um, well, it's a craft channel, but mostly weaving because Jacqueline's Textiles is fabulous fabrics for home and fashion. And I weave fabrics for the most part. I do knitting and crocheting and sewing, but for the most part for Jacqueline's Textiles, I weave. So I have weaving books and, um, here are actually my encyclopedia pages printed out. And this, these books are from 1980. Um, it's from Britain, 1980. And it has a wealth of information, not a whole lot, but like incredibly dense for the sparse amount that it has compared to a lot of different resources on weaving. And I think that's because if you think about it, somebody who was 80 years old in 1980 was born in 1900. And that person was far more acquainted with we everybody weaving everybody spinning as like a part of their daily stuff so these books have stuff on satin damask brocade overshot stuff i have never been able to find anywhere else um, including these books. These books will cover overshot, but they say almost nothing about brocade, and they say absolutely nothing about satin weave. Um, now, satin weave, you can, well, it turns out there's a thing called mock satin. I have what can be built up into the equivalent of a four shaft loom. That's my rigid heddle loom with three rigid heddles used all at the same time. Um, it turns out you, I can make mock satin by doing a certain fiddly thing. Um, satin usually, it requires, regular satin requires eight shafts. I'm never going to have that. I don't want a floor loom. I don't want to fill my entire house room with a loom. Um, and I'm not sure if I'd ever go for a an eight shaft table loom because I have a the equivalent of a four shaft rigid head loom, and I much rather make do. Um, so the great thing about these this um, the encyclopedia that's from 1980, it has information on so many different techniques that are not really mentioned today. And I think that's because back then, far more older people had looms, had spinning wheels. It was more part of the culture to weave and spin. Um, it was far less a dying art than it is today. So it's just, I mean, I'm just floored by this information. You know, I didn't know that I could do mock satin. I can't wait to try that. Um, I didn't know that I could do brocade. <laughs> uh, even just explaining the difference between damask, brocade, um, satin, you know, I look these things up, but you can't find any information on it on Google. So this, this stuff is invaluable. It is priceless. Knowledge is power. 
And when all these were stolen from me, I'm like, please give those back because, like, this is knowledge. Looms, you can replace looms. That's why I have three. But knowledge, you can't replace knowledge. These books end up being the highest value. I, I'm, I'm filming this on a $400, $500 camera. These outvalue the, the camera any day of the week. Um, the most valuable piece of equipment in this entire endeavor I have is right here. So let's go over my treasure trove of books. So we have the Hand Weavers Pattern Directory. Um, this is for four shaft weaving. And it's essentially just like a bajillion different patterns drafts and techniques for four shaft weaving um is it a good book i can't really say because i haven't done really anything with it yet um the most that i've done with more than one heddle is using two heddles which is, makes it a three shaft loom and in that case um it was just to make a double weave fabric um, but I'm looking forward to, uh, going through it, especially these, um, let's see, do we have those patterns pulled up? Oh, there we go. Here we go. So, I would like to do things like that. I think that's going to be really cool. Um, the, I, the Weaver's Idea Book. Mm, it's an okay book. Not my favorite. But it's also not a bad book. Um, it does have information on brocade. Not a whole lot of information. But, you know, it's a great sampler, you know. And that's the thing. I wouldn't, none of these would I want to, like, give away or not have. Each and every one of them has some tidbit of information that I find extremely valuable. So, you know, it might not be my favorite, but that doesn't mean that I hate it. Um, this is a very good book. I love this book. This is a great book. This is a great weaving book. Um, there's so many different things it talks about. Um, it, it, it's, it's a great, like, for my classes, when, when I can start teaching classes and such, this is going to be a very big part of the basic curriculum. In fact, I'm going to try and get the library to buy this book so people can um, check it out. And if for anybody weaving I'm going who decides to take it up as their own hobby or their own profession, I'm going to say, get this book. This needs to be in your library. Um, and that's Inventive Weaving on a Little Loom. Hands-on, hands rigid heddle, heddle weaving, maybe not the greatest book, maybe doesn't have the greatest uh, re um, reviews on Amazon, because it's very basic, but it still has good stuff in here. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's not as in-depth as the Weaver's Idea book, which isn't my favorite, and this one isn't my favorite either, but I would never give it away. I would ne I would never, like, not have it because it does have good information in it. Um, and it has, like, interesting little projects because this is obviously, like, an older book. Um, you know, so that lady's wearing something, like, straight out of, like, 1992, um, which I love, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. Um, so there's that. Um, the Practical spinner gu Spinner's Guide to Cotton, Flax, and Hemp. I am going to grow flax on my family's land, and one day I'm going to grow it, I'm going to spin it, I'm going to weave it, I'm going to process it, and then I will turn into bolts of fabric and clothing and sell it as the end goal of my Jacqueline's Textiles endeavor. And this has a wealth of information, not a whole lot of information because it has the three subjects, but for that, well, for that small amount of information, it's very dense. It talks about flax growing and processing and spinning and weaving and and I love it. So it's a very small book. It, it was inexpensive. I think I bought it used and it is so important because there's just no information on flax. It, it's so hard to find information on flax. So anything dealing with flax. There's just one book I want. I think it's called Flax from Field to Cloth 
um it's like it's an expensive book but i totally want to have it because flax is just not flax for fiber production is just not something you find a whole lot of ridge the ashford book of rigid heddle weaving another book where it's small it doesn't have a whole lot of information but it's a good book. They're all good books. They're, none of these books are bad books. Um, each one of these things, at the very least, can give me ideas, give me inspiration. I love that cloak. Is that not a fabulous cloak? That thing is fantastic. So, you know, e even if I don't necessarily read it to learn something, um, it, it, it gives me ideas. And it's always good to get ideas. So, trucking right along here. Hand Woven Home. This is a good book. Um, again, it's not very big, but it has lots of ideas and some tidbits. This is home decor items, and it talks about like the kind of fibers you want to use for home decor and how to set things up for, you know, some of your home decor items are going to be more hard wearing than others because, you know, you want your dishcloths to be far more hard wearing than your curtains. So, you know, this has uh, just information on home goods that you can weave. And I like that too. All right. So we're going to skip most of these little magazines. They're just like things that came with my loom. And also, I think I mentioned this is the Ashford book of rigid heddle weaving. Of course I'd have this because it's from Ashford, the loom company. This is Weaving with Three Rigid Heddles, a wonderful book that is mostly pretty much just nothing but about twills. And when you weave with three rigid heddles, you end up having the four, sh the equivalent of a four shaft loom, and you can weave things like that. Um, on the back here, it has it's a sampler that you go through in the entire book, and it's pretty much just the bit, the little bitty book about twill. Um, lots of twills. Lots and lots of twills. Um, we've got the Zanakis Technique. This is another, uh, this book you can find online for free, um, from David Zanakis. And, um, this book covers weaving with three rigid heddles, like the Zanakis Technique for the construction of four harness textiles on a rigid heddle loom. Four harness means, uh, four um four shaft four harness um which 